السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ توحید و سنت ڈاٹ کام شروع بالجنۃ التي كنتم توعدون نحن اولياؤكم في الحياه الدنيا وفي الاخره وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَّحِيمٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ In the last session we were talking about the hijrah which is rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's migration from makka mukarrama to madina munawwara and we talked about rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companion sayyidna abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu arriving into madina munawwara after spending some days in Quba and building the masjid in Quba. Then, after arriving Medina Munawwara, building the other masjid in Medina Munawwara, which was the second masjid built in the history of Islam. As I mentioned, in the previous session that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built his masjid all the sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een started building their homes around the masjid and many of those sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een they built their houses attached to the masjid in such a way that the doors were opening inside the masjid, not outside of the masjid. So each person, each of those Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een would be going anywhere through the masjid and when he would get back to his home, he would go to his home through masjid. Because the door opens only inside the masjid. Just imagine their attachment with the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only they wanted to be close to the masjid, they wanted to be attached to the masjid, and not only attached, they wanted to always be in the masjid and going out and in through the masjid. After some time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced, Hawilu biyutakum. Change the doors of your homes. I don't want any door to open inside the masjid anymore. The reason? فَإِنِّي لَا أُحِلُّ الْمَسْجِدَ لِجُنُبٍ وَلَا لِحَائِبٍ The masjid is not allowed. Any person who, did, who, who is junub, which means has to take a shower, is not, is not allowed to enter into the masjid. And any woman who is unclean in her menses, she is not allowed to enter into the masjid. And if your door opens inside the masjid, you will have no other choice but to go through the masjid. And is not allowed for any person who is not clean, has to take a shower, men or women, and any woman who is during her menses, she is not allowed to enter into the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just left his own door opening into the masjid. And he allowed one more person, Ali radiallahu anhu. He said, Ali, I can give you the exemption from this order. 
those Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'in who were around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course they had to go through a lot of hardships to establish Islam. And sometime in their life they got some special exemptions also. Like Ali radiallahu anhu getting this exemption. That even when he is not clean, he has to take shower, still he is allowed to enter into the masjid. And just like the other Sahabi. A Sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I was fasting. And I had a relationship with my wife. I had an intercourse with my wife. What should I do, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Now you have to pay for it. What's that, Ya Rasulullah? Fast for two months. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you already know, whatever I did, it was because of one fast. I was fasting an apple fast and I saw my wife and I couldn't control my soul. And I got into this because of that fast, Ya Rasulullah, and you're asking me to fast for two more months. I don't know how many more times I'll make the same mistake. He said, Ya Rasulullah, then Ya Rasulullah, what should I do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, okay, if you don't want to fast, then feed. 60 people. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have nothing. I don't have a penny in my home. Me and my family are starving. I don't even have a single day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to sit down. He sat there. And of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Miraculously, he must have known that someone is going to become with some sadaqah. So a person came with a lot of dates of sadaqah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is sadaqah. You can distribute it the way you want. He called that sahabi and said, come take all of these dates and go and give it to the poor people now. Now you have the money. He said, Ala afqara minni Ya Rasulullah, should I find anyone? who is more poor than me in Medina, I'm the poorest person in Medina, Ya Rasulullah. I can't find someone who is more poor than me, Ya Rasulullah. So who should I give it to? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed and he said, okay, go ahead and eat it yourself. But this was only for him. No one else. Other Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, including Umar radiallahu anhu, made the same mistake. He had to pay for it. And this will remind us another fact. That when we look at a hadith, we have to know what's the background of it. Someone will take this hadith and will say, okay, if I have to pay the ransom, I can do the mistake and then I can, I, I'll keep on eating the money myself. I'll pay the ransom to myself. It's not allowed. There was another sahabi who got a special exemption also. On the day of Eid, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving the khutbah and he smelled some meat. People are cooking food. He said, it seems to me that someone has sacrificed his animal. And Sahaba told him, yes, ya Rasulullah. There was a Sahabi, Abu Burdah bin Niyar radiyallahu anhu, who has sacrificed his lamb. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sacrificing before the salah is not allowed. If I smell the food now, that simply means he has sacrificed his lamb before the salah. That Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know. That's not an excuse. You have to do another one. Okay, Ya Rasulullah, I'll do the other one, but now I don't have any lamb that's within that age. I have a, just a small baby sheep. Ya Rasulullah, what should I do? Okay, you get the exemption. You only are allowed to do it for this time, but not again. So there are Sahaba Rizwanullahi alayhi majma'een who got some exemptions for certain things. 
in some special occasions. But those can never be repeated. It was only specially for those people. So here, Ali radiallahu anhu got the exemption that he can enter the masjid even in the status of being impure. And his door of the home was opening into the masjid. And as I said, now only two doors were opening inside the masjid. One was Ali radiallahu anhu and second was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here, I would like to remind ourselves one more thing. How the Salah used to stand during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't want to go into the details of that. But since we talked about the subject, it's a good opportunity at least to know some of these things also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we all know, he used to perform the sunnah at his home. And he encouraged us also to do the same thing. After doing the sunnah at home, most of the times Bilal radiallahu anhu used to go and tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, now the people are here and everyone is, people have arrived for and they're ready for the salah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come out of his home. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house was on the left side of the qibla. And the door of his home used to open inside the masjid, left side of the qibla. So he would open the door. Sahaba radhuanullahi alayhi wa sallam, as they would see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would start getting up. And Bilal radiallahu anhu would start calling the iqama. By the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets onto his musalla, which is a distance, many of us might have seen that place in Medina Munawwara, Riyadhul Jannah, a place that's called Riyadhul Jannah, which means the land of the Jannah, the garden of the Jannah. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's qabr, his grave. His home was where his grave is now. And now, nowadays, they have barriers over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house was not even up to that point. Even, it, it, it was even before that. Part of the masjid that was at that time part of the masjid now is part of that area that they have covered so that people won't get up to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we know his house was very small. So small that when he would perform salah during the night time he would be doing salat al tahajjud Aisha radiallahu anha would not have a place to sleep. She used to sleep and had no choice but to spread her legs in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His salah was so long that she would sleep and she won't even know that her, her legs are spread before him. And while she's sleeping, the legs are spread before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he's ready to go to Sajda, he would just squeeze her feet. She will wake up and ride away, pull her feet away, and then he will go to Sajda. The hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. All the openly books of the hadith. She says he used to touch my feet, and then I would pull my feet away. Then only he would get the place to perform the Sajda. SubhanAllah. This is the house of the greatest person that ever came to this world. The dearest person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the leader of all the human beings, including Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam on the day of judgment. And the one who says about himself, Ana Sayyidu will be Adam wa I'm not arrogant, but I'm saying that I'm the leader of all the human beings. This was his home. I don't want to go too far from the subject, but will be a good reminder for ourselves. That when many 
times when we see some people getting a lot of wealth, we might feel, and even those people sometimes get the feeling that these people are having it because they are dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other people are not having it, they must be doing something wrong. And the day we don't make enough wealth, or the time that we go through some hardships, we feel that I must have done something wrong because of which I'm not making enough now. This, never, this is never a sign of the pleasure of Allah or displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has nothing to do with that. If the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was dependent on giving the person wealth and that was a sign, <coughs> having a lot of wealth was a sign of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have been the wealthiest person in the world. But we all know that that wasn't the case. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Kaab, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلٍ وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمَا زَرْعًا He said there were two friends. This is in Surah Kaab. Two friends. One of them had two beautiful gardens. جَنَّتَيْنِ He had two gardens, like just beautiful gardens. And the garden was full of grapes. And he did not have to build his own fence because Palm trees were surrounding the both gardens. They were like a fence all around the gardens. And in the middle of these gardens, he had a lot of growth, which means vegetables fruits, all, everything that he needed in the middle pad of the garden. كِلْتَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ آتَتْ أُكُلَهَا وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا Both the gardens were giving a lot of fruit. And we never did anything wrong to that person. He was always getting the full fruit of everything that he had over there. And in addition to this, وَفَجَّرْنَا خِلَالَهُمَا نَهَرًا We also gave him fountains in the middle of the garden so he won't have to worry about getting the water for the garden. For watering the garden, we gave him two fountains each in each garden. وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرًا One of these days, it was the time for him to go and get the food. As he sees all of this outcome of the garden. He was talking to his friend now. This person himself is not a believer and his friend is a believer. The men Muslim has two beautiful gardens. And the Muslim is very poor person. Doesn't have gardens, doesn't have no wealth. Very poor person, just makes his living. فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاضِرُ He said to his friend, his Muslim friend, while he was talking to him, أَنَا أَكْثَرَ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I have more wealth than you, and I have more family members than you, which means Allah is blessing me with children, with wealth, and He's not giving you none of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ He gets into his garden, he's doing wrong to himself by thinking that this is what I deserve. His friend told him that everything might get destroyed. You know, if the Allah, the one who gave you all of this, he can take it away from you. He said, مَا أَظُنُّ أَن تَبِيدَ هَذِهِ أَبَدًا I don't think this will ever destroy I have all the means of taking care of it. No one can get into it. I have beautiful fencing. I have water in it. I have people working for me. This will never be destroyed. Nothing can happen to this. 
I'll just keep on working for my garden. I don't care about the Day of Judgment. I don't even think I will see the Day of Judgment. Although we don't say it, but our work is proving the same thing. As Salih alayhi salatu wassalam said to his nation, وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ Are you guys building factories so that you will live forever? The earnings that you are making from all of this is as if you want to live forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this man now. He says, وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا he says, Allah is giving me, my Lord is giving me all of this wealth. This simply means once I would go back to him, he will give me better than this also. He is not giving you in this world, that's a sign he's not pleased with you. So he's going to punish you in the hereafter. And he's giving me all of this in this life. So that simply means he will give me all of this in the hereafter. So he's pleased with you. He thought this is the sign of Allah's pleasure. His friend told him, don't say that. أَكَفَرْتَ بِالَّذِي خَلَقَكَ مِنْ تُرَابِ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَ ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا Are you neglecting the one who created you out of dust? Then drop of cement. ثُمَّ سَوَّاكَ رَجُلًا Perfected you as a man. لَكِنَّهُ وَاللَّهُ رَبِّي Although he did not give me, but I do not worship Allah because he gives me. لَكِنَّهُ وَاللَّهُ رَبِّي Allah is my Lord. I'm not going to associate any partners with Allah. Just because I have less wealth than you doesn't mean that I will turn away from my deen. Deen has nothing to do with this one. And I advise you also, why don't you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكْ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ how come when you enter your garden, you don't say, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. You should say this. And finally, it's a long story and continues. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa bi thamari. Everything was destroyed. فَأَصْبَحَ يُقَلِّبُ كَفَّيْهِ عَلَى مَا أَنْفَقَ فِيهَا وَهِيَ خَاوِيَةٌ عَلَى عُرُوشِهَا وَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّي أَحَدًا Now he started feeling sorry for himself and saying, I wish I would not have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used to say, I have a lot of family members. I have more children than you. He was proud of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, There was no one to help him against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he could not even help himself. That proves that at that point, everyone returns to Allah and has to agree that all the power is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this world has nothing to do with this. We were talking about the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Madinah Minawah. He used to come from the door. The door would enter, would open into the masjid. And I was mentioning many of you, some of you at least may, must have seen that place. There is a distance between the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the mihrab where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand for leading the salah. If you remember, there are two mihrab over there. One is just beside Riyadh al-Jannah. That's the original mihrab exactly at the same place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand and lead the salah. Up to this day, it's an original place. They did not change that place, which is a distance. And now they have the second mihrab which the imam uses nowadays, which is about 10, 15 rows ahead of that, in front of that. So that mihrab which is beside Riyadh al-Jannah is exactly the same place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand and lead the salah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he would open the door from his home coming into the masjid, Bilal radiyallahu anhu, as soon as he would see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face, he would start calling the iqamah, sahaba would start making the salah. By the time he's on his place on the salah, all the salah are straight 
iqamah had been set, and most of the time he would study salah. Sometimes he used to look around to make sure that the saf are straight. It says in the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for some time he was making sure that our saf is straight because to make it get us used to it. And after we got used to it, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not always look around to make sure the sub is straight, he would just come and start the salah. Because he knew now we make straight sub anyway. We got used to it. One day as he was about to start the salah, he looked back and he saw one person is little ahead of the sub. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so upset. He started saying to the people, Let us say, O people, either make a straight suck or Allah will break your hearts. If you won't stand straight on your suck, Allah will never put your hearts together. Make sure that you have a straight lines. Sahaba Ridwanullah said, When we saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being so upset, He's so angry and he's going around in the sub to make sure no one else is not standing in the proper position in the sub. He said that was the day that we were so scared that we put our feet together making sure that nothing, no one is even a centimeter ahead or back of the sub. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started the salah. And this might be, I don't think for us to know. I really don't like to go into the details of a hadith because as you know, you cannot, as we are going into it, we just keep on going further and further. But is an information and is a lesson of hadith anyway. That's the only occasion we find in the hadith when Sahaba Ridwanullah put their feet together. Normally, they were not putting it together. That Sahabi said that was the day that we were so scared of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's going around and he went to that person, he was very upset with that person whose chest was little ahead of the sun. So we were afraid that he might, might find something in our sun also and every person is afraid this is why we stood that way just for that day. In that time. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked all the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa to close the doors as their doors were opening into the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa they were so much attached to the masjid that after closing the door they did not feel comfortable. They wanted to have even closer attachment to the masjid. They cannot take it closing the doors. So all of them now, they started opening windows into the masjid. After closing the door, they started opening windows inside the masjid. So at least they can see inside the masjid even when they are sitting home. They will not go through the window into the masjid, of course. But at least they will have that attachment with the masjid. They can keep on seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he would come, they will jump right in. They will get into the masjid. And they will see the activities of the masjid all day along. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just some time before his death, he asked the sahaba, Ridwanullah alayhi wa sallam, to close all the windows that were opening into the masjid except for one window. There was a special reason for making them close those windows and a special reason for having that window open into the masjid. Insha'Allah, in our next session, we will talk about that special reason why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them to close the windows and why he said to that person, keep your window open, it was a special message for the Ummah till the day of judgment. Inshallah, we'll talk about it in our next session.
أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات من الله سبحانه وتعالى قائد أول فصل الصراط المستقيم أن جب التوفيق في فلو لويد الصحابة رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين أن السنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين